which of the following equations must have the same number of real solutions as star? So this equation here. And we've got three options here, log base a of x equals x, a to the 2x equals x squared, and a to the 2x equals 2x. And the answer could be one of these statements, two of these statements, three of these statements, maybe none of these statements have the same number of real solutions as star. Do give this problem a go. I'm going to dive right into a solution. There's a few ways you can answer this, and uh, the way I'm going to explain it is probably going to be slightly more, slightly longer, but that's just more just to help you understand how to solve it in the exam. Of course, you wouldn't have to explain things in depth, you just need to get to the right answer. What I'm going to do is rearrange this and consider the function f of x equals a to the x minus x. And now I'm going to do something similar with all three of these options. So I'm going to call this one uh, g1 of x, which is going to be log base a of x minus x, g2 of x, which is a to the 2x minus x squared, and g3 of x is going to be a to the 2x minus 2x, like so. And now this question essentially boils down to the number of roots f of x has, is that ever guaranteed to be the same as the number of roots g1x has, or g2x has, or g3x has, essentially? Now, let's consider this one by one. I'm actually going to start with g3 because that's the easiest. Um, let me change colour here. So, note that if f of alpha is 0, then g3 of alpha over 2 is 0. So this basically means if I have some number alpha, that when I plug into this, a to the alpha minus alpha gives me 0, then that means that g of al g3 of alpha over 2 will be 0, because a to the 2 times alpha over 2 minus 2 times alpha over 2 will just be, well, let me, let's just prove this, a to the 2 alpha over 2 minus 2 lots of alpha over 2, which will precisely be a to the alpha minus alpha, which is just f of alpha, which is 0. Um, so this basically means if alpha is a root of f, then it's also, uh, or then there's a corresponding root of g3. But the reverse is also true. So if g3 of, let's say, t is 0, then f of t, uh, f of 2t, sorry, is 0. And so this means that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the roots of f and the roots of g3. So if there are seven roots of f, then if I half all those numbers, I'm going to get the seven roots of g3. And so therefore, uh, these two guys must have the same number of real solutions. Great. 